If you always wanted to get one of the Metatron t-shirts but you couldn't afford it, well now is the time. On the 5th and 6th of September there will be a 20% off all shops on Teespring, including the Metatron shop. Enter this coupon code and enjoy your shopping. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. So, this is not really a top 10 list channel, but I do occasionally make top 10 list videos, so here we are. I hope you enjoy. Throughout human history, warriors and soldiers have continuously sought to use better and more deadly weapons against their opponents, and consequently, military technology began to develop armor to protect their warriors from these weapons, constantly addressing innovative means to reduce weight while still providing adequate protective capabilities. Now when making a top 10 list we need to remember that variation in designs, materials used and overall functionality is very much dictated by several factors, such as the weapons a specific set of armor was designed to offer protection from, specific choices made by the warrior class that was going to wear the armor in question, preferring specific features instead of other still viable options, technological advancement, metallurgy understanding, availability of materials and to a minor part overall cultural aesthetic preferences. Also, the kind of weapons they were of a specific set of armor was going to operate dictated certain choices in shape and materials of the armor, as we will see when we discuss each specific set. So, a set might be less protective because of the range of motion that specific warrior had to have in order to use his weapon properly. Hence, the list order from less effective to most effective will be based on the overall protective capability of the armor, innovative designs and trade-off between mobility and protection as compared to other sets. The set that will be more effective against a greater number of weapons without compromising too much, the wearer's mobility will be considered number one on the list. Number 10. Dendra. At number 10 in the list we have ancient classical bronze armor. An example of that is the Dendra armor uncovered in the village of Dendra, dated to the end of the 15th century BC. Made of beaten bronze plates, this armor was Mycenaean Greece state-of-the-art military technology. The panoply's cuirass consists of two pieces, covering chest and back. These are joined on the left side by a hinge. There is a bronze loop on the right side of the front plate and a similar loop on each shoulder. Large shoulder guards fit over the cuirass. The late Helladic Dendra panoply consists of 15 separate pieces of bronze sheet backed with leather and loosely fastened by oxide thongs to allow some degree of movement. Three pairs of curved plates hang from the waist to protect the groin and the thighs. An interesting feature were two triangular plates attached to the shoulder guards which gave protection to the wearer's armpit when his arms were in the raised position. The neck was also protected by a high neck guard. The armor included greaves and lower arm guards. The armor is very much focused on protection, although considering the size of the fold and the length of the breastplate it was probably rather cumbersome to wear. Historians propose the lack of mobility was probably due to the fact that Dendra armor was most likely used by chariot riders. Number 9. Scale armor. Scale is a very beautiful looking kind of armor formed of many individual small armor scales of various shapes attached to each other and to a backing of cloth or leather in downward overlapping rows. In some instances the scales could also be attached to mail rings such as with Lorica Plumata. Some of the benefits of a suit of scale armor was the fact that it would offer good mobility and would be relatively easy to make. But still this sort of armor type wasn't that common nor that widespread in history. The Romans referred to this kind of armor as Lorica squamata and it was used by higher ranking soldiers such as centurions or aquilifer, signifer but also auxiliary infantry and equites, so mounted forces. Eventually Lorica squamata would begin to be considered very outdated armor and replaced by other more functional types. The scales could be made of bronze or iron or even alternating metals on the same shirt. The variations are primarily the results of material availability. Japanese samurai also used armor made of individual scales which were called Kozane. Japanese scale armor constructed from fish type scales, Gyorin Kozane, were reportedly constructed in Japan as far back as the Fujiwara period. Horses covered with scale armor are mentioned in the ancient Chinese book of poetry, Shi Jing. Number 8. Segmented armor, Roman Lorica Segmentata or Lorica Laminata. Prototype armor of about the times of the early empire, it was developed to offer greater protection against overhead strikes. The girth hoops would encase the wearer torso completely and offered some interesting beneficial properties such as good mobility thanks to the leather straps which allowed the armor to collapse onto itself allowing excellent torso mobility. 
the stronger part of the armor is indeed the shoulder, which makes sense, considering the fact that Roman soldiers would be also using and carrying a very large shield which would provide protection for the rest of the torso, legs and left arm. The central cord of the armor would be protected by overlapping lames. Number 7. Lamella Armor Far more popular and used for a much longer period of time and more widespread than scale, the structure of lamella armor was made using cordage and the sections would overlap upwards. Providing a better overall protection than scale, lamella was made from small rectangular plates which could be of iron, rawhide, bronze, laced into horizontal rows. Lamella armor was used over a wide range of time periods in Eastern Europe, the Middle East and throughout Central and Eastern Asia, especially China, Japan, Mongolia and Tibet. The lames were punched and laced together. A lamella set of armor would also provide better mobility for the wearer, which together with its better protection is the reason why it became much more popular than scale. Number 6. Padded armor. Probably one of the most simple concepts of armor and known by many different names as gambeson or akaton is a form of textile protection, a garment made of many different layers which provides good protection against cutting edges, penetration and blunt force. Although it was and could be used as a standalone armor for poorer soldiers, an akaton was a very important component of many different kinds of armor as it would be worn under most kinds of metal armor to support the armor, help wear it in a more comfortable way and would provide padding, hence shock absorption, making the metal armor over it more and more effective and complete. We know ancient Romans used a form of padded garment under their lorica segmentata and hamata called toracomacus, and a gambeson would be worn under or sometimes over male armor with a possible exception of the 13th century, for which we don't have much evidence to support the usage of padded garments under male. Also, in later forms, padded armor would be used in the form of an arming doublet to provide not only padding but also structural foundation where to point elements of plate and so male voiders. So although as a standalone armor it wouldn't be as effective as metal segmentata or lamella, it being so essential and universally used under metal armor in general, it reached number six on this list. Number five. Mail. Mail is a ubiquitous armor. It was probably invented by the Celts and it is possibly the most widely used kind of armor throughout history. Consisting of small metal rings linked together in a pattern to form a mesh, the use of mail as battlefield armor was common during the Iron Age and the Middle Ages, becoming less common over the course of the 16th and 17th century. The Romans used it, the Normans used it, Knight Crusaders, you name it. Roman and medieval mail was riveted, increasing dramatically the strength of the rings. In Japan, although buttered mail seemed to be more common, it was more so on lower quality suits, and there were several different styles of mail used throughout the warring states. It would depend on the school of armorer and the budget of the daimyo ordering it, sometimes also covering every finger of the hand. Although not riveted, the keychain type rings created a very strong link. So European riveted male would be probably stronger, but also Asian male would be a very strong kind of protection. Number 4. Coat of plates. A coat of plates is a form of torso armor which has a series of small plates riveted to a stout foundation textile made of canvas, hemp and other materials. Also decorative coverings were used as leather, silk or velvet. The first visual representation of it is a late 13th century full-length surcoat reinforced with rigid plates, but as we move forward in time, the coat of plates becomes shorter. In its early forms, it had no anatomical shape, being straight at the sides, but later forms will be anatomical, tapering at the waist. Some versions have a lower number of larger plates, others have a very high number of smaller plates. So it will be in the late 1340s that we will have a shift away from rudimentary coat of plates to a more shaped coat of plates giving it that typical late 14th century wasp waist. Number 3. Brigandine. The sort of natural evolution of a coat of plates, as we move into the 15th century and we look at the average equipment of a medieval soldier of the time, we will see it is a garment, generally heavy cloth, canvas or leather lined with small oblong steel plates riveted to the fabric. Later brigandines first appeared towards the end of the 14th century but survived beyond this transitional period between mail and plate and came into wide use in the 15th century, remaining in use well into the 16th century. 15th century brigandines are generally front opening garments with the nails arranged in triangular groups of three while 16th century brigandines generally have smaller plates with the rivets arranged in rows. It was commonly worn over a gambeson and male shirt, and this form of protection was commonly used by soldiers ranging in rank from archers to knights. 
Even with the gambeson and the mail shirt, Aware was not as well protected as when wearing plate armour. However, the brigandine was probably favoured by soldiers who preferred the greater degree of mobility and couldn't afford full plate. Number 2. Tose Gusoku Tose do Gusoku, the so-called modern armour, was made from iron or steel plates called Itamono, rather than previously used individual scales, Kozane. Tose Gusoku became prominent starting in the 1500s as they offered additional protection and excellent mobility. Different from previous kinds of samurai armour, such as the Oyoroi, which was very heavy and mostly hung from the shoulders, the Tose Gusoku had a very definite silhouette. It offered very good protection and excellent articulation. The less armoured part was normally the arm or kote, if compared to European late medieval armour. The reason being the fact that Japanese warriors mostly had to operate bows and subsequently arquebus matchlocks. Samurai plate armour of the Sengoku era is is flexible and protective at the same time. Number 1. European full plate armour. Whether it be southern German Gothic armour or white northern Italian full plate armour or English armour, a full suit of knightly armour of the late 15th and early 16th century is the most effective, functional, protective and marvellously engineered kind of armour by the best smiths in the world. Nothing compared with late medieval plate armour. The articulation of the plates, the domed shape designed to encourage weapons to glance off, a harness of steel was a marvel of ingenuity and metallurgy and it represents the peak of military technology of the past. Differently from popular belief, a knight in full plate battlefield armour still retained very reasonable mobility. A knight could fight, ride a horse, jump, climb and basically do all he needed to do to be combat effective because of excellent weight distribution, overlapping plate harnesses tailored for the body of the wearer to perfection Cuirass is perfectly tailored for the wearer in order to minimize the weight on the shoulders and distribute it on the hips. A knight didn't need to use ranged weapons, was mostly trained to use lances, maces, war hammers, pole weapons and swords, and his limbs could be fully armored to grant excellent protection all over his body. Italian suits were particularly interesting for the usage of asymmetric pauldrons to gain extra protection on the left side of the body, the side a right-handed combatant would normally face an opponent with, while increasing more nimble movement on the right shoulder to better operate weapons. Thank you very much for watching Noble Ones and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.